All right, now we're gonna talk about body language today. And while this is a session on body language in an interview, what I'm going to tell you, you pretty much can use for the rest of your life in any interaction that you want, uh, especially if, you know, throughout your career or when you're meeting people for the first time, I got it all covered. I got it all covered. And I, I, I do have my note cards today. And I want to say, I think, I, I don't know if you can actually see that. I think I set a record for the number of note cards that I have. I want to make sure I call out everything that I want you to know. And I also wore this crazy shirt. So, you know, when I do my arm movements, you, you can kind of see the difference between my arms and my big orange chest. And wait for it. Yes, Halloween's coming up. So happy pre-Halloween to everybody. Okay, let's talk about really what this is all about. Mm. I don't know if you know who Albert Morabian is, but he has a very famous, uh, I think it's called the Rule of Personal Communication. And there is a, 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 a number, they've done a lot of surveys and a lot of science behind this. I didn't make this up, I just took it from him. Uh, where it's called the 738-55 rule. And here it is. And this is why today's session is so important. 7% of your communication is based on your words. 38% based on your tone or your voice. 55 based on your body language. And for all you mathematicians out there, that basically 93% of this transmission is not related to what I'm actually saying, but a combination of all of these things. So I think it's important that you recognize that. That goes for anything, one-on-one -on -one interaction. It goes through when you're communicating with a group, when you're listening, right? Think about that. I, I think I mentioned uh, last week, we had an entire session in my Leadership Monthly Live program on listening and how this rule affects that. So it's, it's, it's vitally important. Now, I'm gonna give you a talk and take you through the four phases of the interview. So basically, when you greet somebody, when they are asking you questions, when you get an opportunity to ask them questions, and then when you leave, that basically covers all four of the sections uh, as, as far as really where you need to be mindful of your body language. But what I also want you to know is that as I go through the things that I would recommend that you do at each stage in the process, I want you to keep these things in mind. There are really seven aspects of body language or, or language body language related things that you need to keep in mind. One of them is your face, one of them is your body, one of them is your gestures, so all your movements. The other things are your eyes touching, right? Like handshaking, hugging, all that good stuff, your voice, your tone, and then the proximity, the space at which you are distant from them or connected to them. So all of these things we're going to try to cover. I'm not going to keep going through and repeating all seven of these at every step at every stage, but I want you to know that I factored all seven of these basically body language communication components that you need to be mindful of as you go into the interviewing process. Now, I don't want you to get overwhelmed and I, I, I don't want you to try to remember all the things that I'm telling you. I just want you to, really a lot of this talk is going to just be reminders. It might open your eyes to a few things uh, that could be misconstrued. Most of it I think is going to be obvious, but some of it will not be. And I want you to just kind of follow me through and I think it will be very easy, easy to retain. All right, let's talk about this. So when you start the interview, when you greet somebody, let's talk about this. This might be obvious, but I am, I am just dumbfounded at the number of people who don't do this when they meet somebody, right? Your smile, it makes friends, right? Make sure that you are smiling and you are giving off that warm and welcoming look, right? It will also, you kind of get back what you give off, but smiling is, is very important. Now, here's another thing. There are various ways that you might be interviewed. You might be escorted into somebody's room or an office or a conference room where a person or a panel is waiting or a whole collection of things, people on the speakerphone, people on the video, all that good stuff. Or you might be in a situation where you are stationary and they are moving people in throughout the day. 
Regardless of the situation, just make sure that as you're smiling, you stand to greet the person. I don't care if they walk in and you're sitting down and you are not fast enough to get out of your seat and they slide into a chair, but you want to make sure that you rise. This is incredibly important. Rise. I don't care what you are doing. Make sure you are standing when you greet them. This is very, very important to make the connection. And there's another big etiquette thing that goes along with you rising is you should be shaking hands. Now, a couple things on this. Whenever you shake somebody's hand, you should be upright and vertical. If you're not, you're basically saying to them, it's not worth it for me to stand to shake your hand. You, you, you're not worthy. It's actually quite disrespectful. Now, I do want to make a mention because we get this question from time to time. Well, I'm from a country where it's inappropriate to shake somebody's hand or I'm a female. I can shake another female's hand, but it can be misinterpreted in my country if I shake a male's hand. I want you to just subscribe to whatever your, you know, your country's culture is if you are cross cultures, all right, you're cross cultures, you're from a country that does not shake hands, you're in the United States or somewhere where they do, and you are a female and there is a male or something of that nature, simply say, I would love to shake your hand, but it is against my whatever or it's prohibited by my religion, my whatever it might be. Uh, just, But I think it's better to be up front. It might even be something that you want to mention before you get there. So I know I know shaking hands can be a big deal. It may, it may be just matter of fact for some of you, but it might be a huge deal for, for others. So I just wanna, I wanna call that out. And then, oi, introduce yourself. Do not think for one second that they know who you are. So you wanna say, hey, great to meet you. My name's Andy Lasavita. Your full name. You wanna know why you wanna say your full name? Because not everybody is, is named Carly Smith or something that's easy to pronounce. La Civita, do you have any idea how many people get that wrong? So I wanna make sure that I'm putting them at ease. I'm giving them my full name. I would like theirs in return. So as you're shaking hands, you're greeting, you're sharing your full name. They now have your pronunciation. So, and if they're really smart and they didn't catch it, they will ask you to repeat it, which is what I would do to make sure that I got it. And then I would actually repeat your name just to make sure it registers. What I'd also like you to do is make sure that your tone is positive and authoritative, right? It should be warm, it should be welcoming, it should be sturdy. There should be nothing cowering about it. This is very important. Just think about that, that red card I flashed about the 38% of the communication being the tone in your voice. So you wanna make sure that you that you have that. And then, I sorta of alluded to this already, but you should repeat their name. Why? Well, a couple reasons. You might be meeting with one person, you might be meeting with multiple people, but you wanna make sure that number one, you are registering it with in your, in your own mind. Nothing is more embarrassing and nothing will get you bounced faster than you calling somebody the wrong name, right? The Robs, the Rons, the Jills, the Jens, the whatever. I mean, it, 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 it's easy to slip. You don't want to. The other thing, people love the sound of their own name, even if they don't like their name. Okay, so, so it's good for you to do that. It's good for you to register it that way. You get double points for that. Make sure to repeat their names. Then, here you go. Then sit back down. So you did all of that while you were standing. Did all that while you were standing. None of that, it's gonna lose its power if you're sitting down while you're doing that. So make sure to stand. Big, big part of the body language, keys. Okay, then sit back, then sit back down. Okay, that is just the greeting. Now, string it all together really fast, right? Get up out of your chair, walk over to them. Hi, my name's Andy Lasavita. great to meet you. Shake their hands, you are Jill, Jack, whatever. And, and just and repeat them. Now, they're gonna start asking you questions. Okay, this is, and by the way, this is for most people, right? This is how most interviews are done. They're usually done sitting down most of the time. They're gonna start asking you questions. Mama always said, sit up straight, okay? It is, it is important. And as a matter of fact, I kid you not, I don't even sit on a chair. So we're doing this, I'm sitting on a Swiss ball, kind of a nice one, in fact. 
So I'm used to sitting up straight. If you are somebody that is used to slouching, you know, like this all the time, it might be a good idea for you to practice sitting up straight before you go to the interview. Because what happens if you're slouching? What do you do? You, you lean on the table, sometimes you lean back, you're doing all kinds of stuff that has negative connotations. Sit up straight. You probably never thought we were gonna talk about that for 45 seconds. Okay, now, when you're listening, smile again. Not fake smile, just I'm receiving, I'm on alert, it sounds good, I like what you're asking me, even if I don't like the question, even though if I think that that's a silly interview question. Doesn't matter, it takes no effort to do this, it actually takes less effort to smile than it does not to smile or frown. All right, I like this one, just mildly nod. Just make sure that they're, you know, I'm with you, don't, you don't need to do this, like you don't need to be head bobbing, uh, but just kind of, you know, slow and steady, give them the smile, I got ya, I'm, it's registering, what you're saying is registering, I'm getting it, I'm not having to repeat it right now, but I'm nodding, 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 I got gotcha. ya, okay? So that's, that's an important one, and eye contact is vital, it's vital, you need to be looking at them. Now, I understand that there's a lot of you that are superb listeners who don't need to look at whoever is speaking to you, and, and, and you're gonna get it, but in an interview, Interviews are not about reality, right? They're not about reality. They're about perception. What do, what do I always talk about in interview intervention, right? It's, it's, it's communication transfer. It's, per, it's, it's the interviewer's perception, registration of what it is that you said, not what you said, their interpretation of what you said. Same thing when you're using nonverbal uh, cues, right? It's their interpretation. So eye contact helps them believe you are listening. You can use your hands, don't be stiff, okay? You sh in fact, you should use your hands. I'm not talking about all kind of wild and crazy, crazy gestures. Just don't, you, do, you just wanna be natural. You just don't wanna be a robot. You don't wanna lean on the table, lock your hands on the table. You just wanna use them naturally. And here's a couple things about your hands. They should be in sight and if possible, your palms should be open as much as possible. Don't get, don't be like a freak and you know, be doing this. But just you know, this is open. If you can see, you know, this is open. This is not, right? This don't 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 cross your arms, and don't point at them. Pointing two things is okay. You know, making hand gestures is okay. Don't point at them and don't whatever you do, don't cross your arms ever in an interview ever. Never, ever. It, 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 uh, you know, you might see those professional pictures. Prob I've probably taken one, you know, where they talk about, you know, doing this and all that stuff. And if your hands are above your arm, you know, you're open. And if your hands are below your arm, just stay away from arm folding. It's closed off. Okay. It's, 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 it has no business being in any kind of positive interaction. Now, here's another thing proper empathy face. This is important. If they are sharing something about their organization uh, when they're asking you questions or when you're more likely asking them questions, I could put this in either one, you want to make sure that you have the proper empathy face, right? If they're telling you that something went wrong, there's nothing wrong with, ooh, that, you know, that kind of hurts. You don't want to be smiling when they're talking to you about a disaster and how they tanked it last year, which is why you're sitting there and they're trying to hire you. So just make sure that you're using the proper face so that they get that you are actually receiving the message and that you are in fact an empathetic person. Empathy is a big, big success factor in just about every job in the world. So I would, I would make sure that you are mindful of what that looks like, okay? You, you, you really need to be able to do that. And when they're asking you questions, even when they're asking you questions, it is okay to take notes. It's okay to take notes at any point throughout the interview. It really is. I get asked this question a lot. It's okay to take notes. Uh, you might want to, you know, they might be asking you a question. You might want to jot something that you don't want to forget. That's totally okay. Uh, but but don't, don't like lose the eye contact with them by looking down and locking in on your paper. Um, just hand scratch something to yourself that you might want to make sure that you include in a story that might be a lengthy story that you need to tell. So that's okay. All right, now. You get a chance to ask your questions. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of this delicious water. Mm. 
It is a-okay not only to write out your questions and type out your questions and bring in your research and do anything you want in the way of collateral. It is okay to look at your notes. It's a sin not to. Okay, so there's, I actually, there's no way you can have an interview with me, ask me everything that you need to ask me and not look at a note. And if you did, I would be virtually certain that you were going to miss something. So it's okay to look at your notes. When you do look at your notes, you want to make sure that you are not reading your notes. You are actually looking down. Oh, I know what that question number 10 is. I need to ask you about this. You look down at your you look down at your list, you glance at it. You do not need to read the whole thing to yourself because you already know what that question is. You're just looking down at your notes to make sure that you got the question you want to ask them. So you want to make sure you look down, glance really fast, look, you look down, you look up. It should only take you a second. And there should be, I would lay your notes out in a manner that allows you to do that. Okay, so that's, that's very important because the eye contact is important. And when you ask a question, you most of the time should be smiling because you are interested, right? This is a great, great question and I'm excited to to get the information. Now, not a fake smile. These don't need to be like joker smiles or anything. It just needs to be a little bit of a smile. Those lips should be going up at the corners. And then I like to lean in a little bit. This is a lean. That that's a lean, right? That's it I don't you don't have to do this, but you want to make sure that that's your cue that I'm there, I'm present with you. I'm not doing anything funky with my arms. I'm not crossing them. Right, I'm not leaning back. I'm not doing any of that stuff. And actually, when you when you engage with somebody, it's better to just slightly move forward to them. Okay, and you got to be mindful of the proximity, but hopefully you've got a reasonable level of space in in between you. And you know, yes, there's umpteen different things that can occur if you got people sitting to your side, or if you got people across from you with the table and configuration it looks like. Don't sweat it. The point is just. It is a way to show them that you are engaged. Use the proper tone to ask your questions. Very, very important. Very important. I'm going to give you two examples. One is a very popular question I get asked almost every week. Okay, the first one is when you are asking your questions, there are questions that you were excited to know. There are questions that you were eager to ask, right? You did your homework. You might have even planted some of this in the rapport building portion when you first came in, right? And you used some of those rapport building tactics that I'm not going to go into, but that I gave you a whole lesson on a week ago. So when you, right, you're planting seeds, I'm really excited. When I get a chance to, to, to ask you some questions, I'm really interested in whatever. So when you actually get to ask the questions, you want to be enthusiastic. Okay, I couldn't wait to ask you this question. You know what? I noticed... And as I looked up on this report and I noticed your distribution across these portfolios were, I'm, I'm really interested to know what your market strategy is to blah, blah, blah. So it just, you want to make sure that you are using an excited tone. You don't need to be over the top. It's just an enthusiastic tone as opposed to, what do you all ask me about on Glassdoor? Hey, should I ask them about all those reviews that totally tanked their rating? Right? You asked me that. What should, should I bring that up to the employer? Hell yes, bring it up to the employer. The way you bring it up to the employer is what makes it work. So you went and you looked at Mile Walk and you said, oh my goodness, Andy, all these people, they, they tell me what a bad boss you are. What do you got to say for yourself? Well, that's not going to go over too well. But what if you did something like, you know, Andy, I, uh, I was looking at your company and I noticed that um, you know, I was just doing my due diligence and I know how these things go. I was looking at Glassdoor. I saw that there were uh, some mentions of some individuals who had a rough time in this department. I just as you know, I, as part of my due diligence, I just want to ask you your insight on this. You know, I I, I I take this in the proper context, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask it. So I just I'd be curious what your take is on that. Right. So you've you've planted the seed that you it's a non-aggressive way. They won't have a defensive posture. You're letting them know you're sane and you're not going to blow it out of proportion and all that good stuff. So it's something like that. So it's 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 very important to use the proper tone when you're asking the question. This is very, very important when you start to get into areas that are can be misconstrued. OK, so you want to do that. You want to make sure that you take notes. 
Take notes, take notes, take notes. It's okay. But as you take notes, write, look up, engage, write, look up, engage, and so on. Okay, now you're leaving. Now I'm out of here, okay? Rise again, no matter what. I don't care. I don't care what they do. I don't care if they dare. Just get up as fast as you possibly can. Rise. Rise, rise, rise. If you're giving a presentation, maybe you're already standing. Just make sure you're standing, okay? You want to, again, similarly, almost in the same fashion, shake their hand, whatever is appropriate in your uh, in your for your custom, you want to make sure you smile. I I mean, this may sound basic, but I cannot get over how many people don't do this. It's all in one fell swoop. And then what? Their names again. Make sure you got it right. Make sure you pronounce them correctly. You want to make sure you do this. Nothing is more impressive when you are able to pronounce a person's name that is actually unique and they gave it to you once and you got it. They actually have tools on the internet. I even use them occasionally uh, because we have a lot of people that are outside the U.S. and some of the names are not familiar to me or the pronunciations are not familiar to me or there are multiple pronunciations for their names and I go out and I say, how do you pronounce this name? I, I, I do that. So repeat their names. Make sure you got it. Don't, do, not, forget to thank them. Thank you so much. And there are a number of other things just tactically that I'd want you to ask them. But just make sure you thank them. Say, thank you so much. Really great to meet you. You know, I've got your information. I'm going to send you a little follow-up thank you. I really appreciate your time. All that good stuff. Do not forget this. I cannot get over how many people forget this. It's so basic. Just make sure you do that. All right, so not going to go through the whole list again. Now you got the do's. That was 25 of them. Let's go through the do nots. The do nots. Now you get most of these. I probably allude. Okay. Eye contact's important. Don't look at the ground. Don't look at the wall. Don't look at the window. Don't look away. Guys, whatever you do, her eyes are up here. That kind of stuff. Okay. Just be professional and make sure you're not staring off into space. If you can, Sit with your back to the window, to the glass wall, to the whatever. You don't want to be distracted. You would be best served looking at a white wall with some bland picture behind the person you're speaking with. Just make sure you're looking in the right spot. Don't pick at yourself. Okay? You know, I, I mean, I occasionally got to do one of these because I got an itch on my ear. But try not to pick at your clothes. Try not to, you know, do a lot of things that are twitchy and all that good stuff. Whatever you do, don't lean back in the chair, ever. Never, 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 just like never cross your arms. What happens when you lean back in the chair? Well, two things. Number one, you're, you're moving away from them. That's not good. Number two, you have the possibility of actually falling over. So we don't, we don't, we don't want to do that. As few objects as possible. So bring your portfolio, bring your notepad, bring your pen and everything else should stay in the brief bag. Your phone should be turned off. All that good stuff. No distractions. The exceptions are if you've done some research, you've got some write-ups, some other articles, things that you've looked at, things on their website, things that you want to use. That's okay to lay out. Just make sure that you can flip through it as you need to and you can do it quickly. You don't want anything being a distraction to them. Okay, so what I like to do is if, you know, I would bring a, a planner or a portfolio, whatever, I would have my papers inside and I would only grab them when I need them. So that's, that's really important. Proximity is important, so don't get too close. No fake smiling, okay? No fake smiling and, you know, watch the blinking and all the extra twitching stuff. But those are just some obvious things. But it's, I cannot stress enough how important the body language part is. And you know what I didn't, what I didn't want to go into today, uh, but I, I think you get and I would apply. I'm guessing there's a question in there in the chat somewhere about like phone interviews and all that good stuff. We talked a lot about rapport, communication, those kind of things, or confidence last week. I would make sure to apply those to your phone interview. Uh, a lot of what I said here about your voice, your tone, your inflection, even your facial expressions when you're asking the question on the phone that calls for empathy, use an empathetic face. 
So it's, it, it's all tied together. Just the fact is that they can't see you. That should not matter because they can actually feel you. They can. They can. So I hope that serves you.